for a lot of years, just, 30, just shy, I think it was one month short of 30 years. Um, and what we're going to talk about tonight is, we're going to start where Henderson's first kicked off back in the 1921, somewhere in London, All right? We weren't far off from that, uh, So these had like, um, was it the one line then, Ray, when he started in the second year? Yeah, yeah. Lines, yeah. And a few presses and what have you. <coughs> there are all the tools and all that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we had um, a production line up in the engineering world. And they used to end up more on the floor than what they did in the door. <laughs> <laughs> But you had one guy drilling, another guy popping, popping them off. So there would be all and then all. Um, and I, I think we had a guy called Harry Blackburn, was my charge at the time. Yes. Um, so we, I used to, and I can recall, if I'm not mistaken, the first year I started, and we were offered a 17 point percent pay rise, which was a lot in them days, but that was the norm in them days, little figures, I don't know whether you remember that, we probably put in between us and it's, it seemed to take an eternity for the put it in. There were some great characters there, there was one, one guy, I think he was called Dirk or somebody, he brought his Harley Davidson over and, and actually sold it to somebody, I think it was the state of the board, somebody bought it from the factory, and Edison's actually shipped it over for him, for Harley Davidson. He was a lovely guy. There was also another character that I can remember who worked for NASA and he was one of the top computer guys in America. And he came over and I had the premier plant away. And I recall one day that he sort of called us up into the, his little office, his computer office at night shift, and he had Californian trees. I think it's Redwood, is it Redwood he called? And he was uh, a guy who used to organise the count in America, the prophetic wood trees, <laughs> and he was showing us these uh, amazing stuff. And he, he, I think he was called Gary, I don't know if anybody can remember him, no. He was a lovely lad. And when they used to go home, um, we used to get them the Sun newspaper and the Sunday Sport, because he couldn't get it in America, and they used to bring us back beef jerky. <laughs> well, it was really good, good fun. There were some nice lads. But that, as I say, it took a long time for the actual pin, uh, premier plant to get into the big shall we say. What was different about it, Jim? Sorry? What was, what was different about the premier plant? It was all yeah. automated. Can you go to the next uh, speaking? Uh -huh. uh, I think there's another picture. If you can see up there, that's one station there. So that chair uh, is a premier plant. I think that's a guy. Matthew Walker. Yes, that's a lad who's on there. He's on that. Mm -hmm. And that's the actual door that I've got in my house at the moment, the one below there. That's a, called a single radio. So I was lucky enough to remain a new and garage door. So I'll put the brace on the back of it anyhow. In the lock. But what it was, it used to get the steel in and it used to go in the, uh, the rolling mills, be processed. Go around, the big light, look like a mouse trap thing on the big dipper reels, come down, and a lad called Derek Barker used to put them into the frame, and then they come round, and they would clinch them there, so that was the end of them for a while, <coughs> and it used to clinch it together, the panels. And we did use some rivets at the, at the end product, and uh, at the end of the line, they would go onto a pallet and then they would go into a paint plant and they could be painted various colours, white, I've actually got a red one on my, on my house, uh, green, I think there was other colours, there was all sorts of colours. And yes, that plant could do any size from 6 foot to 16 foot, height or width, so it was adaptable for that. It didn't always work out that way for <laughs> 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 times. It was frequently There was one uh, particular occasion where something broke down on one of the um, rolling mills or something, and we had to get a part in from America, and we were down for maybe two weeks. I don't know if anybody can remember that. So that, and that cost the company a lot of money, as you can imagine. Um, and that's basically how 
a garage door is manufactured and what they look like. The top one there, the retractable, is the door that goes all the way in to the uh, to your garage. And the other one is the canopy one, which has maybe a few inches sticking out of it, so it's, I think it's called the canopy um, door. Mm -hmm. There wasn't much difference in them. And the most expensive thing on the garage door, does anybody want to have a guess with that one? Bernie, you should know this, because you used to make them. The springs. Yes. Yes, the spring was the most, in, which uh, I don't know whether you can see it on there, but it would go at the top of the door and it would spin round and pull the door in. <coughs> and that was the most expensive one at had. Yeah, say a garage door cost, I don't know, 80 pounds. The spring was actually 60 pound. Them panels there were something like 10 pence. So, you know, a lot of them ended up in the skip as well. Because <laughs> the they were dead very easy. Yeah. Uh, so, um, I don't know where that particular garage door is. That one there, that brown one. But if you can see up there, it's still got a showroom at Chester with over 25 different doors on display. I had a look at the website the other day and you can see what you can get from there. You also do like roller doors and a few wooden doors and what have you. Well, yeah. I ask Jim, was the, was the steel already pre-coated? Did you have to make it? No, so was it a different colour or was it black steel you painted? Carbonised steel. Carbonised, yeah. But the colours are basically the colours of various sizes mm -hmm. and widths. Uh, and um, like Jimmy says, from the end of the Premier plant yeah, at that time, everything came up with galvanised. Mm -hmm. So it then went into the paint yeah. plant. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and you painted them yourself? Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a plant. Yeah, it's like a powder yeah. paint. Yeah. Powder yeah. paint, yeah, like electric. Uh, and then we go to final assembly, get springs on, and the um, more I get all the, the gear on. But uh, I think we've got a lot of them from British Steel, Sheffield, I recall, getting a lot of steel from there. Yeah, it could, it could be, uh, that was uh, British Steel Facebook, it's called Chorus. Chorus, so I think it's Chorus, yeah, get a lot from there. Which was a uh, subsidiary. Sort of so, that was the Premier plant then, so that. Um, I think uh, it lasted till 2010. But we'll uh, move on to the next slide now, Matt, if you don't mind. But, and there we go, we have the uh, famous fire. And it was in 2003, and I've got the date somewhere, it's July the 1st. And it happened at about, I think it was about half past 10, just after our break. <laughs> yeah. uh, there's lots of stories how it started. There was a skip inside and the chemicals were put in the wrong skin or something like that or a big thing or the water. The chemicals. And I remember Dave Green walked past because I was in the uh, maintenance at the time and the fire had gone off and he said this is not a false alarm. There's a massive fire down there and it just took off at well, you can see by the pictures, it just, just took off. I believe that them there, this, like the high one, is the barrels are actually blow up in the air. You can literally see them in the air. And so on that morning, we all had to evacuate. Mm -hmm. Go out into the car park, and it was, a, it was an overcast really day. I don't know if anybody can remember um, who's here. I mean, there's the pineapple there. It looks like that's on fire at the moment there, doesn't it? But it was an overcast day, so we assembled into the uh, car park and everybody took a count. And as far as I know, there was no, well, there certainly wasn't any fatalities, but there was nobody injured. We got everybody out. Uh, and we had over, I think it was over 50 appliances there. They came from all over County Durban, uh, Newcastle, or and yeah, Sunderland. And uh, there was even a forensic chemicals team there because he had to assess that black smoke there. I mean, imagine breathing in a bit of that. And uh, that could have been. I can recall that we all got out and there was a decision taken. Them who could go home, go home, while the others you can assemble down here. Or like me, you can wait up the pub with the sort of guy and wait to get called back. <laughs> uh, 
And I can remember quickly uh, at the time, and it, it was on the Sky News. It, it was that fast, it was within an hour. So the little hoover was on the, the map. And then the reporters came in with the cameras. I don't know if anybody was in the coverage for me at that particular time. And they came round and wanted to chat with anybody. Uh, nobody said they wanted to talk to them. Uh, and they ended up talking to Trevor Jackson, the quiet, quiet as well. <laughs> <in the laughs> <battery, right? laughs> yeah, so I can remember that. Uh, Trevor, they talked to Trevor, didn't they? So, uh, but it was a pretty scary day because uh, obviously Bowburn was blocked off. You couldn't get in or get out at the top end. Um, there was a policeman outside um, Bowburn Cooperage at the time, and well, I remember him because he used to be the son of the goalkeeper, Tony Norman. Uh, he took over from Billy Marsh. Billy Marsh was on uh, Marshall duty then, and he was organising the traffic, and they say Norman came up and uh, relieved him of his duties. And then I think everybody was told to close the windows. And it was like a wartime zone. I don't know. Did you come down here, Steve? Did you? Yeah, you put your tea and the coffee up for you. And that should come in a boat with the back. Yes, yes, you had to leave your car. And I think we got called back at about, was it about half three or four? Yeah, later on the afternoon. You took, you took some money yeah. in at the time yeah. Yeah. to yeah. get your bags and all your belongings. Ah, oh, right. right. Put them back here. And Incredibly, we were all, well apart from the GRP, and we were all back at work the next morning. And I happened to go around and have a little walk around, um, and if we hadn't had that firewall in, that factory would have been no more. It's as simple as that. And even the fire people said that, the fire officers said that the, the actual firewall will save the whole factory from war. Um, and remarkably, we could like do production where I worked on the um, Premier plans, where obviously the GRP end was a tour. It looked like um, somebody just blasted over the wall and melted the cake and all that was it. Did you ever get round to see it? Have a look at it, yeah. The rain, it's not the top of the fire when we went there. Yeah. And he said the temperature inside the mm -hmm. it was over a thousand degrees. Yeah. God. Who does GRP stand for, sir? Class uh, reinforced plastic. It was a, it was the plastic doors. That's where the actual fire started. He had like he used to make um, a garage door out of like what Ray said there, uh, reinforced fiberglass. Fiberglass, yeah. Glass reinforced plastic. Glass yeah. Yeah. right. Yeah. So it was. Um, so it was pretty nasty. Yeah. So I was told that it was two um, chemicals that were perfectly safe on the, or by themselves, but when they were put together. It was a catalyst, and that's what started it. But I also heard that the skip that it started on was supposed to have been outside, so, yeah. So the thing was, Jim, all yeah. the chemicals and that was on the floor of the yeah. chair, Oh, God, right, yeah. Yeah. So that's how it spread. Was it part right. of the skip? Yeah. just yeah. kind of right yeah. across the whole... Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I can recall, like, seeing barrels in the air, and um, I remember standing next to Herbie at the time. And we were looking up in the air like that, and I do believe that that would be barrels in the air. Unbelievable. How and nobody was killed, yeah, I don't know. We all go out, that's the main thing. So, Jim, where's yes. those top two photos? Ten. I don't know who done them. Where did you get them ones from, Mike? Oh, oh, the oh, the oh, 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 yes, it is. Yeah, that's the bush shelter. Ah, yes, it is. Yeah, that's the bush shelter. That's the bush shelter. So Mary Terrace will be opposite there. Right. Well, that's the oak tree there, which will have been also after that. But we all went to the coop. Actually, I'm not sure whether the oak tree was available. It looks like it was because there's somebody standing at the door. But you can see the black smoke, and as it, as you can see, it was going sort of southwards, and that's. A beautiful black and white one, so the final which is no longer there. But I think it was worrying for the community though, because there were so many yeah. people from like Bowburn had had family working in the factory. I remember being past myself because yeah. I knew it was on fire. It came all the news. We didn't really have mobile phones then, days uh -huh. anyway, uh, or cameras and photos. So we were lucky enough to get something like that. So that's sort what of 19 years ago now. Who went to the community centre? Who came down there? Just about me and all the employees. The ones who couldn't get home, 
and well, the likes of me <coughs> went to the, to the Cooperage with a few guys. I mean, when I honestly, when we were walking down, because we had to come from the back woods, can you remember where we walked? We weren't allowed to come down this way, because this, this is where the smoke was coming down, past the old post office and the, the wood. So we ended up having to go right the way around there to get up to the Cooperage and down here, through fields and all sorts, through the wood. So it was really like a walk time zone, helping each other to get to, to safety. And I remember looking back, I actually went in, me and uh, A. Lawson went into uh, Runson and Carol, and they all come out and said, uh, that's not going to survive, that's I'm just going to go to the hall. I said, have you got any job safe? Because it doesn't look like you have a car in your So it was. Did uh, anybody have the car damaged? That day? Not that I know of. It was, it was one particular yeah. last. I think it might have damaged some of the ones that were close. The fire uh, office had to move there. Uh, I wasn't in the car. Yeah. <laughs> the car was right next yeah, to me. Uh, uh, the car was covered with black, black yeah, just just, yeah. Uh, just, you, know. oh. but, uh, you can imagine how toxic that was. Uh, well, like I say, we, we managed to get back to, um, to work the next day, apart from... Um, the GRP, which is where, where it happened. And I think they had about, what, 12 employees in there, I think, at the time. The timber end was badly damaged as well. That would have been in there as well. But the rest of us. But the smell, you almost have smell. It was a terrible slight smell in the factory of, of uh, the black soot. Built a brand new park there uh, and re, re, for reinforced stores. So they were back up in production within a few months, which was amazing. So, Jimmy, you talked about this firewall. What was the design? Of well, the I think most of that bit there, the big hall is the, the main end of the factory where I work. They would have like a firewall there, and this was the JRP section. And the firewall is strengthened by, um, <coughs> I don't know where it is, what you put it, some sort of like asbestos yeah. stuff. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, brace blocks. And I think by law, if you're building a factory, the wall, you have to have one, certainly if you're going to be de dealing with chemicals. Uh, I don't know whether, the, but obviously the Boulder Institute will have one, but any new will have what you call a, a reinforced firewall, you know, by law. I mean, you've all heard of fire doors and things like that, and, it's, and, and that's what really saved the factory, or, or the whole lot would have just went down, you know, to spread into, because you know what I know when a fire gets going, it, it takes no prisoners. Yeah. So, Isn't that a new part of the factory right from 1969? Yeah, so it was built in from the start? Mm -hmm. Well, that particular end was extended, wasn't it? It must have had some fire, firewall as well, it will have done over it, from, uh, from the end, from final assembly. Yeah. Yeah. But you, you think like metal <coughs> wouldn't catch fire, or just like floors, cement floors, but believe you me, once, once stuff like that gets in, there's no, there's no escape. Yeah. Right, any more questions on the file? I'll try and answer them. We've got some guys here who can remember it. Yeah. Well, we're all here to tell the story, yeah? yeah. I just know the next day we all went in and we had to clean everything down. Oh, oh well, that's so we, managed, we managed to make 10 or 12 yeah. hours or something like that. And Barry Tickle also asked Vicky Brockley, are we going to get paid? <laughs> she <laughs> did I can't remember that. Right. What a question to ask, yeah? <laughs> but never mind. Of normal, like I say, after a few months. Or after a while, I think it was like the beginning of the end of Gary's job, like around about sort of 2008, you could tell our orders were going well down in the, uh, on our section. And there was just a general decline. It's hard to say the price is stale, over capacity. Um, I mean, we, we had the facility to do 60 garage doors an hour. Not that we did, but we could have had, you know, and I mean, there just wasn't the market there for them. I mean, we uh, branched out in Ireland, Europe, but then there was, uh, was it Horman? Oh, Built a factory yeah, in Leicestershire, know. and they were mass producing it at a very cheap price, so, you know what I mean? Uh, and it, it was sad to see, because I had a walk around Bulbur the other day, and it's like, I've got a Henderson's Garage store in our estate, 
But when you look at new ones, it's Garador or Homan. So, you know, you, and you think, why? Well, the fact that it was just so overrated, you think every day would be Edison's. So it was a real shame. Um, but one day when I think a salesman came down, or somebody came down, and said, oh, we've only sold six stores this week. Six stores, so we put millions in the stock. Over, I think it was it near Cliff, they had a, a stock, uh, a big yeah. place over there. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. 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 And by the way, we also had a little unit over here as well, where we make timber doors as well. Yeah. 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 Make some doors out yeah. there. So things were like looking a little bit bleak on that side of it, and uh, the garage store declined. And it says there's lots of reasons for it, you know, you can't explain it. But what happens, what happens. Uh, I think it was, well, it was 2009 when I, I, I actually volunteered for um, redundancy. Well, I mean, I think a lot of people could say that we were in big trouble, like, you know, we had that many people wanting to, I mean, I remember two guys came in, they looked the most scruffiest people in the world, and they wanted to buy a whole factory here already, and you just think, you know, sometimes... You got the garage doors, you paid them, yeah. but you can see them where you made mm -hmm. Yeah, take it. Yeah. Ah, is that bad? You need little crooks to start with. Yeah. 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 We're out of head crooks. Cowboys, cowboys. Cowboy crooks, yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> well, it was, uh, we were powerless to do any, uh, you couldn't do any industrial action when you get a decline like that. We're just going back to the, the 1980s, <coughs> uh, when we were PC Henderson's. I remember we all got um, shares. Can anybody remember the share schemes and that? And, there was a lot of takeover bids, we actually got took over at least three times. I don't know who runs it now, but I think it's Asai Abloy. Yeah, the Swedish company. Asai Yeah, that's it. I mean, there was, uh, I remember getting letters. If you had shares, you were getting letters for people wanting to buy your shares. Valiant, and kept with board and so over. There was lots of buy like building companies wanting to buy Edison's at the time. If that was back in the 80s in the glory days, you know. So, uh, what was Cardo? Cardo was a Swedish company. They took over in, I would say, in the late 90s. Because so that watch there has Cardo on it, that's 2000. But they all give everybody employee a watch in 2000. You know. But you never really saw, I can't recall seeing many people from Sweden coming over. I don't know whether we, you see, you know, I think the people used to just buy it off a photo of them days, isn't it? I think, uh, I'd like to say I went in March, March 2009, and I went into care work, I don't know if anybody knows that, yeah. And then a year later, I found out that the whole garage door went, and uh, people like, is that when you went, do you want, uh, who went there in 2010? Yeah, yes, Davey, were you on that end, no? I went, I was going to say I went to Jimmy, and yeah. Simon, so yeah. 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 Oh, you'll see, you were on the whole thing, yeah, the third day. Yeah. Yeah. But the Gary Shaw side that actually closed or was no more in 2010, um, which was very uh, sad. But like I say, I had 13, 30 year in there. Of it, and now we'll move on to the next bit, the next one. So the memories, I think. <laughs> right, yes, the memories. Um, what's there at the top? He says that was, he says he was 21 on there, or that's really quite big <laughs> on that one. Uh, if anybody wants to look at that photo, well, it's, it's up here at the front. Uh, I, I think, uh, is that the mayor? That must be yeah. the mayor. Um, just going off with Alan Kirk, Alan Blakey, uh, Brian Foster, Trevor Jackson, who was famous for his interviews, Big Huey, anybody remember him? That's me dad, I'm just behind me dad. Howdy, Robert March. Jenny Bennett, Mary Bell, Gilbert, Gilbert Hawthorne, was it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I can't make out the other ones. I don't think that was about 1980. The guy in the right, Brian Carroll. And just go to that one there. Sorry, that he was saying about was Brian Carroll. Brian Carroll, the chap on the right. Oh, right. Yes. Indeed. Yes, I think I remember him. Yeah. Uh, just look at that photo, is a person. If anybody wants to call and have a look, I've actually got a bit here. Uh, I don't know whether you can see that, but it's yours. 
Yes, oh, I got into the briefing. <laughs> I've actually got some more time here. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we, have, we have things like the pension, that's the most important thing on there. That was £7. Or this is from 1989. I'll look at this one down here from 1985. So, does anybody want to have a guess how much I was on an hour in 1985? <clears throat> So the name is Peggy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you, in 1985, I was on three pounds thirty-eight an hour. <laughs> yeah, three pounds. I just paid three pounds twenty for a pint. That's right. Or yeah, work an hour for a pint. Right. Did you have the bonus on it? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I've got well, bonus. well, we had the overtime on, and there's some bonus, yeah, because that got incorporated in your pay, didn't it? Obviously, it was going to be winners and losers. So I was on the magnificent thing of five pounds and seven pence if I worked overtime. So I'll get two pints. <laughs> that particular week, I worked four hours. Yeah, there's the bonus stay. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so that in 1985, the basic was 109 pounds a week, and then I got 23 pounds 80 odd for, for um, a bonus stay. And that was quite high where I worked. Obviously, there's always going to be winners and losers in the border scheme. Uh, just on the other side, I don't know if anybody can remember uh, some of these. We had overalls, we had to pay 21 pence for our overalls. Uh, the trade union in them days was 90 pence, 91 pence. Prize film, 15 pence. Can you remember that? <laughs> we built 50 quid now, is this? <laughs> and then I had like what I call savage your earns. And I don't know if anybody can remember Dr. Bernardo was going into there. And we had what we call the Hospital Saturday Fund, which was like an insurance scheme that went around. I don't know whether they're still going now. Yeah. So we'll help you with like, um, still going, is it still called that? Uh, that's amazing, that. Uh, so that appears to be. Then, um, well, I was just talking about the social club. Uh, well, just before I go into that one, there, <laughs> there, that picture there was. What I got when I was 21 years service, I think we all could. Anybody had be do 21 years? You were still 21, you used to do 41. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, we used to get, I think uh, it was Leslie Waitman, so I thought Waitman's daughter came down with this brochure, and I'm not kidding you, there was like long shades in, and just total terrible gifts, you know what I mean? <laughs> and she said, just go away, get what you want, and bring them to say yes. So I paid, I think it was £99 for that down in Durham. It was a limited edition. I loved the bits because I support them. And I handed them to me and you got your money. So it was just like a tax for her. So it was a very good thing. Didn't it? I don't know whether he still did with 21 years of service. So I don't know. I'll probably keep it. You'll get the GMI. You'll get it. Oh, and that would be good days. And then. Um, we look at the Christmas parties, I don't know, New Year's Four State, New Year's Four, and uh, we go to the Christmas party, days away, racing, what have you, some of the dogs I can remember going, I've talked about the sort of service awards in the picture, and then we've got a watch. Um, and the other thing I've written to mention is, I don't know where, um, is sort of like, I wouldn't say celebrities, but like people who have like, Work there. We all know why we did it, the, the Durham Wasps. And can you recall the Cooper brothers who worked there? Mm -hmm. Big two, I saw you there. Canadian International, he's a lovely lad. Do you need to see us? Yeah, remember him? Mm -hmm. Lovely lad. Just worked there for a few months while he was playing for Durham Wasps. Alright. Uh, another occasion is I was working on the shop floor, I think it was back in the Dolls gym. You'll remember this guy, you'll remember him. Uh, and Mr. Certain Keith Hackett was a referee mm -hmm. and he was a salesman for uh, Henson mm -hmm. and he came round walking round the shop floor one day and we gave him some jip because he wouldn't give someone a penalty I think the way before. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <coughs> he did someone wrong, he wouldn't let the player back on them. Yes, on he did someone wrong, we gave him some jip, yeah, didn't we? Yeah, he sent off uh, and them to run and yeah. play and score. <laughs> yes, he was a, uh, he was a, uh, what you call, well, he was a famous referee in the time of Sammy, from yeah, Sheffield, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah, yeah he, he, had, he had the chance to go to America. Did he? Um, for, I think it was six months, uh, and Henderson's wouldn't let him 
have the time off. Also, another occasion where I have no idea remember this one, Jimmy, and say that uh, we had to name a garage door for a certain you know, uh, Yes, uh, it was a 16 foot one, uh, right? And the gaffers come down from downstairs, we all knew who it was for, and somebody said, Oh, I think we're going to make two in case he doesn't want this first one. And uh, what in them years there was sort of like a hundred, two hundred percent inspected. So you had like the likes of all the inspectors coming around looking at it, or it eventually went out the front room or somewhere in Essex. Which I, I do believe somebody was saying the reason actually someone's bought it. He was doing a charity thing or so. Or, or to, uh, can anybody else remember any famous people who were there? If I forget any. Far from uh, you guys who were here, <coughs> I bet we've gone through at least thousands of employees over the years. It's only, uh, uh, like, probably never heard of Bobby Rutgers. Uh, During the finals of the Men of the World Jazz. See? Uh, and we, we was, he was in the final the week before the cup final. Mm -hmm. We went down two weeks, two, uh, three games in the room. Mm -hmm. Just just another mention of, of these, like what Fogey said, when Romford was still closed, which I forgot to mention, closed in, I think, was it the early 90s or something like that, that's why Auburn got most of the reduction after that. We used to go down and play them in football, and they had proper sports and social clubs, I don't know if anybody, did you ever go down, Dorian, no, or did you go here? Yeah. I would say, you went to play one of those ones, yeah. Yeah, the big massive sports club. Um, and a bar, cricket course the lads, uh, and they were, weren't far off Dagenham, the Ford factory with that, I remember the night we went past there. Uh, they took us to this nightclub, uh, in a famous nightclub in Essex, um, and I think Eddie Kidd, can anybody remember him? What was, he, was, he was hanging around, and then, when you needed about 50 quid to get in or something like that, so, we couldn't afford it on our own it just <laughs> wasn't there. But we used to play football and they made it very pleasant and all that. Naturally, we won. They yes. came up and they came up here twice. Yes, they came up here, yes, they came up here, we used to go down. So that was a yearly, sort of a yearly event of like darts, dominoes, football, whatever. Because Dave Parry came down and played centre, or did he play centre half for them? He played for them. Yeah, he played for them. At the time, then he moved up to Boba and didn't he? Uh, yeah. Oh. No, so we had a lot of them, and I think did Bromford get offered jobs up here? Uh, I don't think they did, did they? So yeah, so there were there was quite a few yeah. staff came up. Yeah, uh, just to go back to the when it first started, because mm. I did put something on the uh, Facebook and Facebook. Okay. Can anybody remember Bill Mohan? Yeah. The Archer, Bob Archer. Yeah, well, his wife mentioned on there, and Bill Warner, and the lives of the story, so, uh, we saw uh, Jeff Warner, because uh, they came up and then they lived in, I think it was Henry. Henry. Yeah, and it's Walter Henry. Are he's still there? Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 His wife yeah. is gone. Yeah, God's right. Yeah, we do. <laughs> oh, we'll, never, we'll never forget him, do you? We were always in his office. <laughs> uh, uh, but, uh, typical light copies, you know. I was Harry, I remember, everybody was Harry, I remember. Uh, you know, it was good days. But you could see, on certainly on the garage side of it, you know, it, it was over capacity. And eventually, it's still going with, uh, I think, Mal, you said about, sorry, how many said about 40, 50. Uh, it's still going, but obviously, they don't make garage doors. It's, or is it sliding doors now? Still sliding doors, but yeah. they were going to go back into the garage doors. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what came. Yeah. So well, I think the original Mr. Yeah. P.C. Oh. Henderson yeah. think it was a good idea to construct garage doors at that time. Well, if you think about it, just about at every house, there was going to be a lot of building up for the wall. Um, just about every house had a garage door, not so much now, as you see, town houses. In fact, when me and Jimmy were on the doubles, we were noticing that a lot of houses uh, were getting what you call two single doors, you'd see a lot of them around on big estates and posh houses, or posh houses or what have you. And, 
I think it was just the demise, demise of it. I mean, ba basically, the garage door, I mean, there's still some wooden ones that I put the car in. But you stay with Ali on the garage, who puts the car in the garage? Nobody. In fact, we've lost three mm. spare rooms. Yeah. Uh, two, two houses opposite me about the garages. Right, I think a lot of it's to do with like in them days though, Jack, cars used to rust, didn't they? If you didn't put them in the garage. Whereas now they don't tend to rust or you get you change your cars regular so people don't feel as if they need to put them and look after them. Plan and regulation as well. Do you want houses that are sort of smaller so it's easier to put a little drive on the front than have to put a separate separate carriage? Yeah, true. Yeah, I mean, and then we had all the presses and all the side. There's the room there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah there was some presses in there from 1921, I think, wasn't there? Yeah. Oh, the rivet guns he had used to build Spitfires in the morning. Yeah, he did they? That's no joke. Really? And all the date on the layers of the 1930 war. Yes, that's all. Right. Realise they're going to be now. You literally had to uh, kick it down and get the damn thing all over, didn't you? <laughs> uh, uh, it was absolutely fantastic. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, by the way, I am retired now. <laughs> <laughs>